Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. We're in Mountain View, California at the offices of Atlantis Computing. We're going to be talking about Atlantis's new software, USX. It's a software-defined storage offering that promises to deliver all flash features and performance at about half the cost of a SAN, so in the $2 a gigabyte range. To help me with some of those conversations is uh, Chathan. Chathan is the CTO and founder of Atlantis. Thanks for joining us today, Chathan. My pleasure, George. I'm always excited to talk about Atlantis and our technology. One of the things you guys do is bring a lot of features and capabilities to the offering. Let's talk about deduplication. That seems like, like the buzzword of the day lately. How do you guys leverage deduplication into your environment? Great question. We look at deduplication as a very extraordinary data path optimization technique. Historically, deduplication has only been used to condense or reduce the amount of data that lands in storage. Right, basically reduce costs, essentially, right? Exactly, from a yeah. capacity standpoint. When we started the company way back in 2006, our view was that dedupe can be a lot more than that. In fact, if you insert dedupe at the right place in the ingress path, you can change the complete characteristics of data across the life cycle, across all the different data services, et cetera. So interestingly, we use dedupe not just for consolidation, but also for improving performance. So can you give me some ideas what you mean by that? Sure, let's walk you through the typical life of an I.O. inside an Atlantis USX uh, storage system. Say, and, and you know you can use any kind of storage with uh, USX. You can have flash, you can have spinning disks, you can have traditional SAN NAS, doesn't really matter. Virtualize all of this, and our data services sit on top of that. A couple of those important data services are dedupe and compression. Okay. So in this drawing over here, what I have is a bunch of VMs that are running on top of Atlantis USX. The colored circles over here really show the different types of blocks that are being generated by those VMs. So you know, just the color of the block dictates the content. Okay. So essentially, what dedupe is doing from a capacity standpoint is it's single instancing all these blocks. It's doing this at a 4K block level. Okay. So 4K blocks come in. And, and as a result of that, we don't really need to take everything the way it is down here. We simply single instance them down between the VMs. So you've got okay. one red block, a blue block, and a purple block that, that finally end up post deduplication. So essentially what's happening here is the, these red dots are redundant data, the, the blue dots are redundant data, and the purple dots are redundant data, and then you've uh, deduplicated them or single, single instance them down to a single block each. Exactly. Okay, perfect. And you get a you know a reduction anywhere from eighty to ninety five percent depending on the type of data. Okay. Uh, in in very heter uh, homogeneous workloads such as VDI, test and dev, VMs where the VMs practically look identical. Right. That can be about ninety five percent. Okay. But in in typical server workloads, databases, mail, exchange, etc., that can be anywhere from eighty to ninety percent. Sometimes seventy five to eighty percent. Okay. But we're definitely in the high end of that, so it's it's always going to be worth it for us. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Great. And the second thing that we leverage deduplication for is actually accelerating the performance. And that's because we very cleverly introduced deduplication in the I.O. path, and we changed the way we acknowledge rights for I.O.s based on whether data is duplicate or unique. Okay. So we only pay the penalty of actually committing all the way down to the physical storage tier if data is unique, because there's only one copy of it. Right. But for all the data that is actually duplicate of stuff that's already in the system, we can actually acknowledge it right away and simply make changes to our metadata and persist that down. Okay, and that's got to really help performance, right? Because you're turning around the response much, much quicker. Is that right? Performance can be astounding in that, in that sense. So you can have multiple millisecond latencies down in your physical storage, but right in the compute layer, we can basically keep latencies under a millisecond for most I.O. Wow. Yeah, so okay. you get essentially very, very high performance. Also, because these are VMs, and the Atlantis USX infrastructure is also a VM-based infrastructure, you typically keep the traffic within the host as well. So you can get 800, 850 microsecond latencies for most IOs. So my, it, my essentially my investment in workload here pays off because I'm reducing so much traffic at the back end, right? Exactly, so okay. you need lesser storage, you need lesser fabric, everything shrinks because you're leveraging deduplication at the right place in, in the whole stack. Gotcha, okay. And compression plays a really important role in this as well because we can essentially take the blocks that are already deduplicated and then do a variable length compression on them. Okay. And as a result, you don't really have to commit even that full entire payload down. You simply commit what is the condensed compressed version of that down into the physical storage tier. Okay. Right? So that combination of dedupe and compression is very, very synergistic. A lot of times you have workloads that generate textual data. Textual data doesn't dedupe necessarily very well, 
but compression is very synergistic to those sorts of data. So right, there's right. a complementary synergistic effect between these two that reduces the physical footprint, eliminates the vast majority of IOs even needing to go down in the capacity tier and simply get serviced from, okay. from higher up in the stack. So you're eliminating stuff that has to be compressed through the deduplication and then you're compressing it so and, and everything gains as far as you're just wiping out a lot of stuff that has to go to the storage tier as well, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So then, so obviously there's, as we talk about, you know, when we think about deduplication, we always think, man, a huge capacity savings, but there's also, in your guys' world, a big performance gain then as well, correct? Yes, performance is a big gain. In fact, performance can be as much as 10x more simply by dropping our software onto the virtualization stack, onto VMware ESX, for example, without needing to add any more physical infrastructure, without needing to add Flash. We have multiple designs and reference architectures that show how you can use a hyperconverged infrastructure that's actually faster than the fastest all Flash, array, uh, all flash arrays on the market today. Okay, wow. And, and so I would assume that really what you're doing down here is you're actually just making whatever storage we happen to use down here just better, right? Because you're, you're delivering data to it in a more efficient fashion? Exactly. The software is smart enough to address storage based on its unique characteristics. So we will do our own optimizations before we land data on Flash that is Flash friendly, that is write friendly. Same thing for spinning disk. We can coalesce in a very aggressive form and write sequential data into the hard drive. And we can do late, real time latency sampling into existing SANS and NASAs to make sure that we're basically optimizing the way we write data down. Awesome, thank you. So I think what you've seen here is that deduplication is a feature that's often thought of to optimize capacity and make storage cheaper. But what we're seeing is that deduplication can actually really improve performance and make the back end so much more efficient. Thank you for joining us today. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. <laughs>